Uh, testing one, two. I think this is working. Hi, everybody. So, um, yeah, I thought I'd do a video on traditional tools. I got some really neat things. Hey, why don't I just show you what I got right now? Um, and then I'll explain, like, I'll just give a quick demonstration of the tool in use, and then I'll say what it is. So if you want to rush out and buy one, you can. And then after that, I'll go more into detail as to um, what the tool actually does. So, okay, so we have a bunch of lines here. Uh, I can use this tool here and with some degree of precision, I can zap that one line. And if I need to get rid of a lot of things, let's say uh, if I have a lot of messy crap everywhere and need to get rid of a lot of it I've got that all right so this is a friction pen FRI XION the friction pilot makes this um, and so the thing is it's it is a ballpoint pen it's a gel roller and the ink is very special in that the ink will disappear and it will disappear at 60 degrees Celsius. Um, which means if you have something, if it's hot enough, if you expose it to high heat, uh, 60 degrees Celsius, it will vanish. Um, if you throw it in the freezer at negative 10 degrees Celsius, it will re reappear. So normally how the fric friction eraser works is this eraser here doesn't, it's just a little plastic nubbin. Um, it doesn't wear out. It's actually quite durable plastic. And as you erase, it warms up the paper and it causes the, um, the ink to erase. Now, personally, I feel it, it takes a, a fair bit of action to make it disappear. But I mean, hey, it's a pen that's erasable. Um, so I use, I actually don't use the uh, friction erasers very much when I want to erase. Okay, so yeah, it magically disappears um, with heat. So when I want to do wholesale destruction of ink, this is a Zico lighter, Z-I-C-O. So Zico makes these lighters, which it's a butane torch lighter. And um, yeah, I think, oh my god, it's blowtorch. It, it's powered by, uh, you just fill, there's the fill, uh, the refill, so you can just uh, get these at cigar stores or smoking stores, and you can buy the refills uh, at convenience stores and whatnot. Sometimes you may find these at convenience stores as well. Um, and yeah, there's a nice ergonomic trigger, so you just put that like that, and bang, 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 and uh, that's what it is. So it lets you direct the heat very, very um, precisely. You can just bang. You can just aim it and shoot it, and it's a very nice ergonomic grip. Now, it is a blowtorch, of course, and you're probably thinking, oh my god, that's crazy, that's way too much heat. And so you don't, you'll notice that I'm not too close to the page. I don't want to burn my page. I do hold it a fair distance back, and I do it in little bursts. I go click, 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 click. I don't, I don't hold it on and try to wave it around uh, because I'm only shooting at like spots. I'm just like erasing large spots with the uh, the Zico lighter. Now I'm going to give you a warning about these lighters, uh, torch lighters in general, is that if you are in a um, a shopping mall, a large shopping mall or a convention center, these places often have very, very advanced um, fire detection systems. Now, I'm going to give you a little personal anecdote. I was at a shopping mall, and I was sketching there. I didn't set off the fire alarm, but a security guard did come by, and, and you know, see, he saw what I was doing. Like, I mean, he, um, he came because he, like, obviously, you know, they must have sent something on the fire detection system, so they sent him to check it out. And, um, you know, he was very polite. He, you know, wasn't, you know, and, and he, he, he explained, oh, yeah, it's like that thing's, it's, it's detecting the, like, the, uh, the fire detection system was detecting this thing. There's cameras everywhere if you go to these places. So, I mean, just don't use these at uh, shopping malls, even though they may, even, they may even sell these at shopping malls. But don't use them in large areas, which are large establishments that have advanced fire, fire detection systems. Use them at home. Uh, the TSA will not allow you to bring these onto an airplane. These are not, they're good for, you know, personal travel use if you're in parks, outdoors, that's great. 
um, you know, and, and if you're going to use it at your own place, that's fine. But generally speaking, these are not too travel friendly. I know there's a, a lot of people who like to sketch um, at conventions. Uh, you know, there's comic book conventions and video game conventions. They love to sketch. But this guy, don't bring it, okay? Because uh, you you may or may you may set off the fire alarm, and uh, and like I say, they will know exactly where it is. They'll find you on camera. They will find you, and they may fine you. So um, yeah, just you know, you don't want to find yourself being banned from any uh, in any events or any shopping malls. So don't bring these, um, or, or just don't use them. You know, keep them in your bag, and don't use them. Use them at home. You know, that's fine. So um, yeah, so the thing is that this is the Zico lighter, um, and the other neat thing about these uh, these friction pens, the friction pens come in different colors, so you can get them. This is a brown friction pen. Uh, this one is orange. They come in different uh, diameters or, or widths, uh, ink, ink widths. So this is a 0.4. This is a 0.4. This is very, very fine. And then they also have the uh, 0 0.7, so it's much thicker. Uh, they also come in, like that's orange. I use orange for my initial sketches, and uh, I use black or I use brown for my quote-unquote final sketch. Um, you can also get them in red, and this is a much thicker one. Uh, and they also do come in black, although this one is was originally an orange pen, and I put a black refill into it, so they do have black as well. And um, the nice thing about friction pens is they generally don't um, smudge, right? This is one of my problems I've always had with uh, pencils. I love pencils for the fact that they're erasable. My, I, I don't use them because they often smudge. I, I look at my sketchbooks from years ago, and they're all smudged up and, and just kind of nasty, and, and uh, I don't like that, that smudging. So... That's the, um, yeah, that's the, you know, it erases super cleanly. And depending on how hard you push on the page, you know, like what's left behind are the page indentations. So generally speaking, you don't want to push too hard on the, um, on the page. Now, the other um, thing that I was using, which was the precision eraser, this is the really, really cool one. This is the, uh, the Max Wax. This is called a, a Max Wax, or they also have Speedy Wax. So there's two two types of uh, wax pens, wax working pens. These are normally used for wax sculpting, um, and it just uses a single double A. So you just push and turn, and boop, this little guy comes out. There's a little double A sitting in there. You just smack it, and little double A comes out. Now, yeah, it came with a, a little uh, alkaline battery. This alkaline ba battery, if you use this thing correctly, um, if you use this thing the way that, that I do, that battery is going to last nearly forever. Um, the only thing is that the temperature of this little heating element that's on here, you push the button and the heating element turns on, you can get the, on a fresh battery that that heating element will turn red hot. Um, it, you hold it for a, a while and it will eventually turn red hot. Um, that's completely unnecessary. You'll end up burning your page. So instead what I do is I just tap it and see that? If I tap it, that runs a little bit of electricity through the heating element. It makes it hot. In fact, if I, I can, I can you know, burn myself. I don't want to do that. So you just turn it on, let it cool, and then use that residual temperature you can just turn it on and then draw turn it on and draw and you don't need any pressure whatsoever it just has to touch the ink and it will erase it very very cleanly um no muss no fuss and just the residual heat is enough to get rid of like maybe but uh just a little bit of ink so if you make a teeny little mistake and you want to clean it up use this thing right so friction pens and this max wax pen or the speedy wax pen uh, you know, like they, they're they're very um, well. Here's the thing: is that this thing gives you this incredibly precise control over what you erase, and you don't have to use a whiteout pen, right? There's no whiteout. There's no fumes. There's no like just like crap like on your page. Um, this thing just erases so cleanly, and even the areas I find that the areas that I will draw over many times, right here, I'm going to draw over this. I'm going to saturate this area with like ink. Well, I should. That's the other thing. If you if you're zooming too fast, right, you'll find that the pen begin line begins to thin out. You have to go slower with pens. Give the the ink time to flow. It takes time for the ink to get on the page. Unlike pencils, pencils will no matter how fast you go, they'll lay down their ink just like that. Uh, they'll lay down the graphite just as fast as you push. And pencils generally, the harder you push, the darker the line. With these um with these pens. Um, if you find that you're not getting quite the line that you want, it's not thick enough, you just need to go slower. And if you're not getting a thick enough line, use a thicker pen. 
I, I know it sounds really like stupid and elementary, but um, the thing is that these do come in you know point four and point seven and point five. This is this is a point five. Um, you know, get get the point four, get the point five, get the point seven. You know, and you'll be fine, right? Like just just use a thicker pen. The thicker pens will also have a greater ink flow. And so yeah, I could use the uh, the Max Wax. And look at that! I can draw in white, like just, um, and if I were to torch that, bang, 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 it's gone. And that area, I can continue drawing on it, and the pen just doesn't like it. It doesn't um, suffer a problem of. I, I guess the what I'm trying to say is that the pen doesn't suffer the problem of ink, of paper saturation. It works just as well. So, what I'm getting at is that I know a lot of people love digital. I myself am, a, you know, I, I huge, I'm a huge proponent of digital. I I do love digital um, because it erases so cleanly and and the stuff lasts forever. But this is really close. This is the closest I've seen to digital. I know it's traditional, but it's the closest I've seen. Um, to the durability and reusability of a s surface, you can see a, a slight ink stain, right? But it's very, very slight. And I really did saturate that area. And of course, you know, you generally don't if you're if you're doing that much. I'm I'm purposely abusing it to show how far um, you can abuse that that area. Actually, if I keep zapping it, it will eventually go away, and a little bit of smoke is going to rise. I think that area has had enough. Um, yeah, but I mean the paper. Oh yeah, the paper's starting to wrinkle. So that, that's the other thing. If you keep hitting an area, you, you got to give the paper time to cool down or you're going to get some, some bubbling up of the paper. Oh yeah, it's starting to ripple. So you know, just keep that in mind with, the, uh, with, with your, your, your torch. Things need time to cool down. Yeah, that's, so it, it's erasing pretty darn well. Almost completely gone. Not 100%, but um, still I would say better than you can get with pencil. It's far better than you can get with pencil. And it's a bloody pen, for crying out loud. It, it's a pen, and it doesn't smudge, which is absolutely wonderful. Um, and you get precision with the Max Wax pen. So if you use the Max Wax pen the way I do, which is to use it in short pulses, and then erase, and short pulse, and erase, um, you, that battery will last a really long time. Oh, I think that one is done in permanent ink, or uh, non-friction pen. Yeah, this one's done in friction pen ink. Um, it will last a really, really long time. You know, you can use an alkaline battery, and um, it's great. $25. I think I, I paid about $25 for this Max Wax pen. I bought it on eBay. And, um, yeah, it's just a wax working or wax sculpting pen. And um, comes with a cap like that. Right. So this one, will this one you can probably use um, indoors. You can probably use at a shopping mall. Won't, this one will most likely not generate... Huge problems unless you glow the tip red hot. Even then, I, I I highly doubt that they'll sense this. So this one is probably this one is definitely much more travel friendly. And uh, if you are going to take it with you on a flight, well, I have no idea what the TSA those crazy maniac fanatics are um, like. But I would say you know bring it without a battery. You know bring it without an alkaline. You can just pick up an alkaline battery when you when you get off. Uh, once you're in the security area, you can pick up your alkaline batteries. You know from one of the stores in there, it'll probably be overpriced. But yeah, you could do that. Um, so yeah, there's the Max Wax pen. Fantastic. Um, all right, another thing about these uh, pens that I'm using. These are almost all friction pens. I've got a Parker pen. This is a like a nice twenty dollar. I think Parker pen. So this is a, a, a uh, it uses a pressurized cartridge. These are nice. This is a nice permanent. So the thing is that you may wind up um, drawing your. Some people like to do an initial sketch in pencil or some kind of erasable erasable medium. Uh, and so I suggest for your initial sketches, orange is a fantastic color because it doesn't. It's not obtrusive. It it um. It doesn't look. Uh, I don't know how to explain this, but it 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 doesn't upstage the line work. Right. It doesn't. It's not so dark that um, you can't see. You can't see past it, right? Like, aren't it? There we are. Right. So there's an example of the orange line work. I haven't erased it yet. I still left it in there, right? So the orange line is nice, right? You can still see it, but it, it doesn't obscure your dark line work. And this, these are the, so. This is orange and brown. This is done with the black ink. 
right? This is all friction stuff. If I use my lighter, it'll go. So another thing that you can do is you could use something like a Parker pen. So you could use a orange pen like this, and um, yeah, give give. The thing is that the thinner the pen, the more time it needs to create the lines. And don't try to push hard to get more ink out. Uh, it generally doesn't help. Maybe you may have to, sometimes you'll find that this, the, the structure of the tip, um, the way the ball is, the ball is not exposed very well on the side, so you may have to um, angle slightly upwards, and then, ah, now it's much more reliable, far more reliable this way. Okay, so just get used to knowing the, 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 the quirks of your tools. Um, these friction point, these friction pens, uh, they can be had on eBay. Um, I bought this in Japan, but uh, I find that they're coming. I'm finding them now in a lot of stationery stores and drawing stores and writing stores. Um, so yeah, you can do your initial sketch in orange. Um, work with a permanent ink like this Parker pen. Strange thing, it's a. Uh, figured it's a pressurized cartridge and it shouldn't have this problem, but uh, okay, there we are. I just haven't used it in a while. And once again, uh, you can use your torch lighter to erase the orange stuff behind, and the permanent, regular, conventional ink will stay behind. So this is another way in which you can work. You can use the um, the, the the lighter as a cleanup tool, um, as as opposed to um, and and the the, the uh, regular ink will just stay behind. Uh, let's see. These so I I often store my stuff in a pen cup like this. And I would suggest you getting a, a simple container for a pen cup. The, the reason is that this gel ink, I find, is very... Um, it flows. It really flows. It's not very solid ink. It's, it's very um, liquidy ink. And as a result, it settles. So if you're leaving your pens alone in a drawer sideways for years, um, the ink will settle, and then you'll find that the pen doesn't start up very well. So I say store your ballpoints uh, tip down like this, right? there. I store all the tips downwards in a pen cup, like that, and um, that makes sure that, you know, the, all the air bubbles that are in the ink, um, they all float to the top, and the ink is always good, so whenever you want to use this stuff, if you're not drawing for a while, you return to using a tool after a while, it'll start up, it's good as new. Um, these also, if you're buying refills, these are refills that I bought on eBay, they're friction ball refills, these are, the, are black refills, um, very inexpensive way to keep your pens going. So, you know, like, and again, store your refills upside down like that. Um, and so what do I have? There's kind of an assortment of pens here. So there's the, this is the, the black one. Well, it's orange one with a black refill in it. Um, yeah, this is a fine 0.4 orange. This is a fine 0.4 brown. Um, I've got a, a 0.7. This is a, a 0 0.7 brown. Um, I've got my refills. This is a 0.5 red. Yeah, this is a 0.5 black. And then I've got another, and, and of course there's the Max Wax pen. There's the Zico lighter. There's, um... And then there's another couple of tools. So if you're planning on going the, uh, the, the route of using permanent inks as well, this is another one by Pilot. They're not paying me to. They're they're not paying me to advertise for them. I just find that they they make some really really nice writing instruments. This is a Pilot fountain pen, a pi, uh, Namiki fountain pen. It's known as the Vanishing Point. So the Vanishing Point is kind of special in that it's uh, it's a fountain pen. Right, it's a writing instrument, and again, it can be bought on eBay. This is the most expensive of all my traditional tools. This thing can go for about you know anywhere from a hundred dollars to two hundred, maybe one fifty on average. So it's got a, a clip that stores it upside down like that. Keeps the tip up so it won't leak on you. And um, there's a small spring-loaded door inside there. So whenever you, whenever you, um, you retract the stylus, whenever you retract the tip to protect the tip, a little door flaps and shut over it. Japanese design, really nice. little spring-loaded door shuts it and helps prevent it from drying out. Even so, if you leave this thing for about a month to two months uh, in storage, it will dry out. Um, and you can refill it with a uh, with pelican ink or any kind of bottle bottled fountain pen ink must be fountain pen ink water soluble stuff. So there it is. It's got a converter on it to refill the thing. You just put it in the bottle and just squeeze it a bunch of times to fill it up. 
So yeah, this is the vanishing point pen. And so I can... Here. Let's just draw a quick arbitrary shape. And then I'm going to figure out, let's see, let's find some areas where I want to shade this thing. So I find out where the shadow line is. Maybe I'll have another shadow line about here. And then I want it to fade off to about here. Another shadow line here. And fade off point around here. Okay. So, oops, let me store that over there. I'm going to get my 0.7 for a thick line, so I'm going to do up the outline. Here, let me just put these other guys away. I don't want to have them disrupting my hand grip. Great. So, rather than using my fingertips to draw, this is how I'm working. I'm, I, I will use my shoulder to draw. And let me just bring that up there. And I'll push the camera back and see if I can get it to focus nicely. Yeah, that's out of focus. That's too much light. Hang on, let me uh, get into the manual controls of this thing. Uh, okay, here we are. I think if I turn the exposure down one, there, just crank it down one notch. Nice. Okay, so... You'll see that I'm not using my fingertips to draw. This is very important when you're working with digital. Right, I can use my wrist to do this. This is fine. Because I'm trying not to destabilize the tip. If you destabilize the tip, the line quality will suffer. And you don't want to use excessive pressure. In fact, you want to use as little pressure as possible. You're just brushing the ink on with the rollerball. And you want to avoid excessive pressure. And, and you know, like you want to use as little pressure as possible, just enough to make the ink flow out nicely to engage the rollerball to the page, to the, uh, to the paper. Um, and the reason for this is that if you start pushing hard, you're going to indent the page, and then you're going to lose control. Of the, it's going to start railing on the page. You're going to derail when you make a groove in the page by pressing excessively. If you need a thicker line, just go over it multiple times. And turn the page, of course. This way you can always see, you know, you can always get an angle on that and you can see what, what you're doing. And like I say, if you, 0.7 is a pretty good thickness for this kind of outer line inking. I know if you want, you could use a thin line and then just build up the line like this. You could use, I mean, use a thinner pen and then build up the line. But uh, with a 0.7, you won't be there all day doing that. So like I say, go slow, because the ink takes time to flow. Don't zoom all over the page. Oops, looks like I made a bit of an inking mistake over there. A little bump. Oh, I can feel, feel the paper kind of railing a little bit. You feel the paper railing back off on the pressure. So, I mean, it, this is one of the th reasons why traditional is... Um, kind of nice in that, I mean, there's a lot of, it takes a lot of skill. It takes, extra, there's additional skills when you're working traditionally. You've got to be very aware of the tools um, of, of what's going on. All right, so the, if the paper's beginning to, to fight back against you, then just light, you know, lighten up on the pressure. In fact, if you want, you can start start your stroke on the outer outside of the line and then work inwards. Okay, so I've got a few little mistakes here and there, a few little bumpity bumps. So let's uh, cap that up, drop that in my pen cup. I use the Max Wax, I'll just zap those little problems away. Oops, I overdid it. So again, this is something that you use. Um, in a steady situation, you know, like in the privacy of your own home or studio. And not when you're on a bumpy bus. Um, also, 
any kind of moving air, moving air currents, uh, wind in particular, will affect that max wax's ability to perform well. It will also affect the ability of your torch lighter to perform well because it it's going to cool things down. It's going to stir up the air. It's going to deflect the air, and it's going to cool down the heating element of the max wax pen. So generally speaking, use it on calm outda outdoor days. Don't let the wind destabilize the... Uh, don't let it cool down the tip. There we go. Nice and clean. Now, I bring out this. This is the fountain pen. Now, the fountain pen, this is going to make some permanent lines. I call it semi-permanent, meaning that they can't be erased. But it is a water-soluble water ink. And again, you see the way that I draw, right, is that I, I use my wrist and I make little patches. If you're trying to shade an area, don't shade with really, really long lines because it becomes very difficult. Um, if the longer it goes, right, like this is controllable. This is probably the, the longest line I'm, I'm ever wanting to shade. But smaller patches are much easier to control. And again, don't use your fingertips. Don't use your finger. Don't do this because what happens is the angle of the stylus begins to change and um, you lose your consistency in your line. Right? And you hatch in little tiles, little make little hatch tiles. You can move over a bit and then hatch tile that and hatch right. You just stitch these little trying these little tiles together and um you can treat them like polygons, right? Polygons in a in a computer rendering program or wireframe program, right? You just hatch these little tiles and you can shade in three dimensions like this, right? Like that's really, really um, a really good technique. So again, if you are moving too fast, right? You're trying to be sketchy, don't. That's a, that's a pencil thing to do. It's not an ink thing to do. This is because the ink takes time to flow through the gudgeons of the pen to make its way to the, the tip. Through it's, The ink is coming through through capillary action. The ink, the, 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 this is water-based ink, has viscosity. It takes time to get through the pen. You need to give it time. There's a maximum flow rate to the pen. If you exceed that maximum flow rate, your ink is going, your line will just peter out and you get nothing. So if you want thicker lines, go slow, right? If you work very, very slow, and if you want consistent lines, don't use your fingertips. You know, use... You can get some really precise work. Draw from the shoulder, right? Sit up. Sit up straight, draw on, you know, with your, your pad on your lap, and then you can just, you know, move this stuff around. Don't use your fingertips to draw, otherwise you will eventually get, like, right, uh, what is it, um, carpal tunnel syndrome, that sort of thing. Um, you know, you'll wear yourself out. So I say, you know, draw from the shoulder and the elbow. This is very comfortable. You know, use the friction of, of the, your hand to stabilize your hand or just like push down on your hand and anchor and then you can make even even finer, you know, movements. And then once you reach the range, then then slide over and then right? So a really, you know, it's very controllable very controllable and the line is very consistent so this is the namiki vanishing point and so if i want to if i want to say highlight some of this um or let's do some shading with the namiki namiki is is basically pilots you know their their high-end writing instrument division again very light if you need darker lines don't push harder just go slower now, the special thing about this this pen, this is the extra, this is the fine point nib. They they come in different widths. I go for the fine point. Um, the medium is a little too thick, but you can get an even finer line by turning the pen upside down, like this. And you're going to use the back of it. Now, again, if you use the back of the pen, you're using you're using an even finer capillary, and so you have to move even slower to get the line you want. If you're moving too fast, 
the line will be too thin, it won't be very effective. So, turn it upside down and take your time. You can zigzag back and forth. Look how slowly I'm going, right? Very slowly shading this thing. You need patience. Okay. Take it very slow. And then in this case, I'm going to hatch in tiles, so and this I'm going to be a lot a little bit faster down here because I want the line to fade out. So use the speed of the pen to determine how thick that line's going to be. Work very, very slowly here. And I work faster because I want that line to fade out. Now, now that I've done that, I'm going to retract that, put that back into my little pen cup, and now this is a water. It's a it's a brush pen by Letraset. It's known as a Tria T R I A Letraset L E T R A S E T. Letraset is a company that makes it. It's called a Tria a marker or tree a pen. Normally what happens is letter sets will let you fill them up with um, inks, like like um, felt tip marker inks, uh, stuff like Copic markers, you know, it, it's that kind of thing, right? So Pantone markers, letter set makes these. You can blend your own ink and then, you know, so it has these gradations on it, but in this case I just fill it with water. And uh, it has just a little brush with water. Pretty simple. This is a cotton napkin. You can get these at some restaurants. Disposable cotton napkin. They just pitch these things out. So, if you squeeze it, you know, a little bit of water will come out. And then I blot a bit on the paper because I don't want to have this thing sopping wet. If it's sopping wet, you'll make a big mess. You know, you can try it out on something like this. And look what happens, right? It, it bleeds the line out. If, it's, if you're seeing like a shine on there, right? It means it might be a little too wet. You just want it to be damp. Oh, it's, it's really flowing out, so there we are. You can use this to blend and blur the lines. So I use the napkin to remove excess water, and then I have a go at it. I just want it to be damp. I don't want it to be blotted, to be like, you know, splattering the ink everywhere. Oh, too much. So I used on the outer line. I used the um, the friction pen, and that friction pen is not water soluble. So that outer line stays intact. Oh. And the inner line, on the other hand, the inner shading stuff is all done with Pilot Namiki with the um, with the vanishing point. fountain pen. So the fountain pen is using that water soluble ink. And I use the very, very thin, I use the um, the back side of the pen, the in or on the uh, on the, the inner fill, so that it would um, make a very, very fine line and that line would obliterate. It would it will just come right apart. Come apart and uh, that way it, it you don't see as much of the lines, right? You don't want you want those lines to really to blur out and to, to, to dissipate. Um, as much as possible, so I did want like a hard cast, like a really hard kind of uh, line on these little transition parts there, but I wanted to have a softer um, transition on there, right? So it's like bounce light that's filling in those areas, and so I use a, a much finer line. So, so you know, none of this stuff is random. It's not very you know, zoom, zoom, zoomy, you know, it's not like that at all. It does allow for a lot of expression. There's a lot of, you know, control techniques. That's how I get these reflections, right? That's all all done using uh, the techniques I've shown you. Um, and I use the uh, the orange, you know, I use the, so, so okay, so here's a tool, break down a list of things um, that, that I've used, kind of my indis indispensable tools. So 
pilot FRI XIO and friction ball point. The red one I almost never use. You can get one if you want. Um, 0.5 black, just good for your everyday use. Um, barring that, you can use brown. So 0.4, nice and thin. You may find that if you're doing eyelashes and fine work, 0.4 will do you very well. And just remember, don't use the pen sideways like you can with a pencil. More tip down if possible. So hold your pen like that. Look at how this, how like the, the first joint of my index finger, it's right in there, right? And then you can go in like that. You don't use your fingertips to draw, rather you use your shoulder and you just balance on your, on that little callus there and you can, you'll get a better line. And go slow, okay? It's a fine point thing. If you're not getting the line you want, you need to go slower because the ink flow is a is a, a problem, right? But um so point four is good for your fine work. Point seven, very good for the outer line work. You need those bold lines, bold crisp lines. Point seven, very good. Brown, I use uh, personally I, I think I like brown more than I like the black. Um although the black is good if you just want to sketch and you don't want to do multiple stages. You want to do um, multi stage work Brown's very good. Um, also, for light sketch, 0.4. You can get 0.5 or 0.7. I, personally, I, li I like using 0.4 just because it's so thin and, and not obtrusive. You don't see it. It means that when I start doing this kind of work, the line just vanishes. You don't even see it. So 0.4, very good for highlight marking, very good for initial sketches. You can buy the refills. These are 0.5s. So I would say get one holder, right? Or, you know, get one holder for each of the uh, diameters you want and the colors you want. Try them out. If you really like it, then buy a refill. Much more economical, much better, much cheaper. And store your pens and your sketchbook very carefully. Don't put this sketchbook in a, in, a, in a hot car, hot sunny day. 60 degrees Celsius will erase your inks. Um, also, if it's very, very cold, negative 10 degrees Celsius, careful where you store your sketchbook because any lines that you've erased will come back. You can use this to restore a sketchbook that has been blanked out by a hot sunny day. Um, but, like I say, you're going to wind up having to re-erase some of those lines. And eh, keep your sketchbook and your pens. You know, make sure that these pens don't go, don't throw these in a hot car. Same deal. The ink will, will run clear. Uh, if that happens, throw them in a freezer. Let them cool, cool down to negative 10 Celsius. They should come back. All the same, I can't say it's great for the ink. So try to keep these things out of, you know, extreme temperature conditions. Store them carefully. Um, careful about uh, getting these things shipped in the middle of winter. Again, actually, the middle of winter should be okay because if it's cold, it'll probably be all right. Um, but be careful about hot situations as well. Um, what else do I have? Yep, those ones I talked about. Parker pen, if you want something that is a permanent line that will not bleed. So if you want permanent lines that don't bleed, Parker pen, any old ballpoint, that's fine. There may be those times you know, where you want something that won't bleed and is non-thermally erasable. Right? Sometimes you want something that, that is really a permanent line. You really want a permanent line. You can't erase it. You can't bleed it with, uh, with the, the water pen with a water brush. Then fine. A Parker pen will do you quite well. Again, you can get refills for these. Um, I like the Parker pen because once it's actually started up, it's lines. Hmm. I'm going to have to rescind that because this thing, I notice it takes a fair bit of pressure. Ooh, it's it's really blobbing up. On the other hand, I haven't used it in a while, so I have to uh, shake it out. Maybe that's it. Yeah, I don't know what it is about this pen. It was good when I first bought it, but it looks like it takes a substantial amount of pressure. Yeah, this guy takes a bit of manhandling. I don't know. Hmm. I think I may be. I may have to. 
call my verdict on this. Yeah, call a different verdict on. I'm going to change my verdict on this. Maybe not. Maybe not get the uh, those kinds of pens, or maybe it's just that I'd left it too long on its side. So that could be it. It could just be that it's not feeding well uh, because of that. Um, right, and then finally the Pilot Japan Pilot Namiki fountain pen. This is the Vanishing Point eBay. Two hundred one fifty to two hundred dollars, maybe one hundred if you're lucky. This ink, non thermally erasable, can be bled with a uh, water brush. This is the Tria Letraset water brush. There are other companies that make them as well. Uh, something similar. Get a cotton napkin for blotting. So use that to, if you find that there's too much water f appearing, then just dry it off. You just put it there and let let the fight let the water soak out of it. Okay. And then again, you see that I use the tip. I use the um, the front front side. So front side will leave the lines. If you want those lines to vanish, turn it over. Use the back side. Remember, don't don't go too fast. If you're not getting if the lines not appearing. You're going too fast. There. So those lines, those thin backside lines, those will uh, ob obliterate. Just good. So, Letraset Tria, Pilot and Pilot Namiki Vanishing Point. Zico lighter. Zico lighter is what you use to erase your your friction inks. En masse, if you're trying to do cleaning, like cleanup. Bang, gone. Um, and then if you need the precise work, if you need to erase with precision, or you need to take a line that is very, very thick, and maybe you have a little bit of a an indentation or a bump that's disrupting that line. Then Max Wax Speedy Wax Pen. Push once, release. And the gentlest, no pressure. Just it needs to just make contact, that's all. Okay. Really good cleanup tool. The best, the best I've seen in terms of pens. This thing really kind of clinched um my return to traditional media. I'm not, you know, giving up uh, digital at all, of course. It's just that traditional can go where digital can't. Uh, like the bathroom, you can sketch on park benches and whatnot. Um, this stuff will go anywhere you want. Uh, you, you need to do any outdoor sketching. Uh, bright lights, this thing works really, really well. It's okay if you drop it. Um, it's very inexpensive. It will last you a while. Um, you never have to boot the stuff up. Right, you don't have to wait for a program to boot up on this stuff. It's very it it doesn't smudge. Right, your hands are fairly dry. They won't smudge. You can make very clean work. Um, and like I say, it's this stuff doesn't have. You don't have to pay a thousand dollars. I know they have. You know, uh, there's Wacom tablets. There's also cheaper alternatives like the um, Monoprice tablets and uh, Hanvon and Huyen and Yenova. They've got screen tablets out there. Bosto tablets. Um, yeah, I know those, there's those, but like I say, if you don't even have all that much money, um, you can still get the nice, you know, working on paper. And in some ways I'd say that this is actually better. Get a scanner, a flatbed scanner, flatbed scanners can be quite inexpensive, less than $50. You can get page scanners, which are these handheld bar units on eBay and you can just roll them across the page and they will scan the page and then you can work on it digitally afterwards. Um, and like I say, you don't have to pay thousands of dollars. This guy, $25, $25 roughly. This little Zico lighter, probably $20, $25, maybe not even that much. Um, these guys, maybe 2 bucks, maybe less. The refills, same deal, like maybe $5 for a refill. Um, for like a, like a, a three-pack refills. Um, Letraset Tria, maybe 5 bucks. Ten bucks if you're at an expensive place. Um, again, eBay or a buy online. This one's expensive. You can probably find like um, another like, but the thing is that you can go to any writing writing store and buy a fountain pen. 
But the thing is that you can always refill these, like with just fountain pen ink, and that's really economical. So I know this one is m the more expensive one. This is like a $200, you know, $150, $200, but I really like that. It's really, really nice. Sailor also makes some very, very nice pens as well. But just a good writing instrument, a good writing implement. So, um, yeah, uh, traditional pens. I love them. Uh, clean stuff. Portable. Erasable. The cleanest, it erases actually even more, the, if I use the, the friction pen, it erases even more cleanly than pencil does. Um, what are you waiting for?